Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. Uh, first, uh, hazardous weather. We've got a high wind watch out here for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area, Bering Strait Coast, and that doesn't kick in until Sunday morning, and, that's, and then it extends out through Monday afternoon. And at that time, Sunday morning, winds expected to pick up sustained 35 miles an hour, gusts above 60 miles an hour, possibly uh, developing Sunday morning through Monday afternoon. Otherwise, that's about it. The uh, high surf advisory is ending at 4 p.m. Friday afternoon everywhere else, and no other watches or warnings. So satellite imagery showing a uh, low-pressure system moving into the western bearing out of, uh, well, from Kamchatka Peninsula. And uh, front right through here, not really much of a precipitation producer, but uh, definitely much colder air behind it with uh, the rain changing to snow showers at Chimia and temperatures falling there. So snowfall levels behind this front all the way down to sea level and uh, some showers uh, approaching ADAC and also some scattered rain and snow showers around the Perbaloff Islands, wind southwest ahead of the front there, gusting 35, maybe 40 miles an hour over the Perbolos this afternoon. Also some gusty winds with this band up here to the north. 38 miles an hour reported at Gamble and 33 miles an hour at Nome this afternoon. Those winds will be coming down and winds much lighter now, 15 to 25 across the yukon Kuskokwim Delta area. And that will uh, continue to diminish this evening. Otherwise, a band of clouds here just east of Kodiak Island and uh, slipping on up, we kind of uh, cook inland in between two areas of precipitation, some light snow fell over the Sitna Valley, Squintna on up uh, toward Denali Park in the Alaska Range there. And then some light showers that slipped on up into Prince William Sound and toward Cordova Valdez into the Copper River Basin. Amounts pretty light though, a little bit heavier amounts uh, earlier today due to the system that uh, weakened and pushed eastward. About uh, three-tenths of an inch falling at Juneau, Petersburg, and Kloak. Earlier today, that all starting to taper off this afternoon with maybe some clearing showing up. Scattered rain and snow showers I mentioned here along the North Gulf Coast. No really heavy precipitation amounts. Those three I just mentioned were about the heaviest there were around the state. Areas of light snow up through here, generally less than an inch uh, falling in this area. And then some flurries there at Wainwright and Point Lay with... Uh, Fog half mile reported over at uh, Dead Horse this afternoon. Uh, visibility there. And this front out to the west with the colder air snow showers following in behind. We'll see tonight that uh, slips eastward here and then kind of stalls as it, uh, this low gets in its way over the eastern Aleutian. So areas of rain across the Fox Islands into the Alaska Peninsula southeast flow here. So heavy precipitation on the Pacific side of the peninsula. Should stay dry over Kodiak, risk of some moisture into Sitkanak late tonight. Diminishing snow shower conditions here from the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. A little more prevalent, a little more widely scattered, or a little more uh, per, uh, scattered nature there for the Seward Peninsula. Milder air, that should be in the form of rain and snow at sea level. And then narrow band of snow out ahead of that. Clearing out South Central Alaska. Uh, Tonight, with uh, light winds, could lead to some patchy fog, possibly in some of the lower valleys, but generally dry and colder temperatures. And then showers along the eastern border and still a band of showers right off the coast of the Panhandle. And then we've got some areas of light snow stuck with cloudy skies under this 1,030 millibar surface high over the eastern interior. Fog and flurries hit and miss, probably more miss than hit for the north slope and the western Arctic coast. This is the next system, a lot of moisture with this strong southerly jet pushing that right up. And you'll see tomorrow, uh, by tomorrow afternoon, uh, roughly this position. So gale force winds, 
Possibly storm force winds coming in the Kodiak Island waters areas in the Barrens with uh, conditions deteriorating for the North Gulf Coast. In the afternoon, a uh, chance of rain and snow reaches the coastline tomorrow afternoon later on, give or take an uh, hour or two. And even some moisture tries to slide into the northern panhandle with cloudy skies down to the south, otherwise to the north. Uh, partly to uh, variably cloudy conditions here with some uh, definitely some clearing areas. And winds, a uh, big increase in the winds here. Again, uh, pretty strong winds. So you can see gusts above 50 or 60 miles an hour. Kodiak Island across northern Bristol Bay. And then back down to the west, uh, some good, strong north-northwesterlies, possibly 50 to maybe 55 miles an hour here. Mostly I'm Chitka over to possibly Adak at this point. And then some uh, chillier air Flurries, light amounts, not much of an increase in the wind yet for St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Strait. That's not expected to take place until Sunday morning. You see a much tighter gradient out here. So 35 to 45 mile an hour wind, sustained gusts above 60 miles an hour in the forecast, possibly St. Lawrence Island to the Bering Strait. Offshore flow dries it out over the western north slope areas into the uh, no attack valley on out to the coast. And then this front pushes up, warm air surging northward here, so it'll be a Blizzard to start in Thompson Pass and maybe some heavier snow southern Copper River Basin early on, uh, rapidly changing over to rain and the first uh, push of moisture up into the eastern interior. Low temperatures tonight, uh, 35 to 40 for the Panhandle, low below zero over the eastern interior areas and single numbers for the Arctic Coast, 20s, Yukon Cusquam Delta, lower 30s uh, for the uh, Nunavak Island area. Highs for tomorrow, lower to mid 30s, south central Alaska, single numbers up to the northeast, lower teens on the Arctic coast, mid 40s for the Panhandle, upper 40s Kodiak Island, lower 40s for the Aleutians. And Sunday morning, lows a little chillier up here, uh, 15 below there at uh, Arctic Village, and minus 7 at Chakitsik, with single numbers along the Arctic coast, either above or below, and 20s, south central Alaska, mild temperatures, upper 30s and near 40s for the Alaska Peninsula. High temperatures, mid-40s for the Panhandle. Single numbers from the Brooks Range to the Arctic Coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic here uh, showing narrow band of IFR, Central Bering Sea down to Adak and Atka. More IFR up across the, uh, well, about roughly Unalaska Dutch Harbor into the Alaska Peninsula, over to Chignik and beginning to come up to Kodiak, VFR, southern Alaska here, marginal over a good portion of the interior with a narrow band of uh, IFR roughly near the White Mountains with marginal VFR mostly all the way to the Arctic coast. Southeast coast here, start out with some IFR over the eastern northern areas and then by tomorrow afternoon, just marginal VFR with the IFR not quite reaching the coastline, extending back to the west here Definitely into Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, Aleutian Range, Alaska Peninsula, Southeast Bering. Ahead of that, a swath of uh, mostly VFR here over southern Alaska. Then some marginal and IFR areas, uh, western area, Seward Peninsula into the, toward the Nilato Hills into the east, and then narrow a batch here somewhere between or just north of Northway and Toke and south of Eagle. And for the Sunday morning, that expands a little bit there. Moisture streaming northward now, and IFR, Prince William Sound, into the southern Copper River Basin. Uh, definitely IFR to low IFR with the uh, precipitation will definitely start as snow. And then some of that spills into the, uh, the IFR spills into the northern panhandle along the coast. Another batch here, southeast Bering, eastern Aleutians, Cold Bay, False Pass, and those areas gradually improving out to the west the farther you get. Still some IFR over the Seward Peninsula. And for Sunday afternoon, marginal VFR. Aleutians, the exception being Shimmy and Attu with VFR, and then uh, Fox Islands here in the IFR, just south of the Pribilof, so marginal there for St. Paul and St. George. Marginal VFR right up to the Bering Strait. Uh, improving here over the northern part of the state, uh, but some marginal VFR hanging tough there on the north slope. And then IFR in areas mostly uh, the upslope areas with this east-southeast flow, so into the Copper River Basin and the western slopes, or the eastern slopes of the western Alaska Range, and then Kodiak, North Gulf Coast into the northern Panhandle. Passes Anatuvik tomorrow, marginal VFR, and for Adigan, starting out VFR becoming marginal, 
And for Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR, good flying day tomorrow there for Lake Clark, Merrill, and Rainy. Windy, starting out marginal early on, and then VFR uh, sometime mid to late morning on through the afternoon. Isabel, VFR. Mintesta, starting out marginal, becoming VFR. Tanita, good VFR. Portage, VFR, but moisture surging northward into western Prince William Sound, so the eastern entrance going marginal late in the afternoon. And for Chilkoot and White, IFR to start early, and then marginal VFR at times throughout the afternoon. Freezing levels at the surface all the way into this Chuck CC here, and uh, right along the coastline on down tomorrow morning, hugging the North Gulf Coast, and then just east of the Panhandle, 2,000 feet over the Panhandle, back to Kodiak, and uh, the Alaska Peninsula, 4,000 feet there, over to the Queen Charlotte's. Icing, most of this, uh, this is the uh, position tomorrow afternoon coming northward. So by late in the afternoon, just reaching the North Gulf Coast, Kenai Peninsula. Heavier icing likely there for uh, Kodiak, considerable moderate above 6,000 feet. And this approaching the north coast of the Panhandle by late afternoon. And some icing threats back to the west there around the Pribilofs above about 4,000 feet. And then just some spotty stuff up here over the northwest. And jet stream, strong south to north flow. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, building northward along this ridge here over the Northeast Pacific, but pretty good flow around that 120, 130 knots. And then the Arctic jet stuck up to the north there, so that's keeping all the real cold Arctic air up to the north and then spilling into Canada. And for 9,000 feet southeast, east southeast, 40 to 50 knots here coming into the, again, in the afternoon, right across southern southwest Alaska, lighter to the north, northwest, 45 to 55 into the central Aleutians. And at 3,000 feet, 50 to 60 knot easterlies here, Kodiak Island across uh, Bristol Bay, northerlies to northwest at 50 knots over the central Aleutians. Light winds up to the north, light winds over the panhandle. And turbulence, quite an area again, starting south, coming northward and increasing in the afternoon. Kodiak Island, moderate chop, below 5,000 feet. Southern Kenai Peninsula, all of the southwest interior, except for the Yukon Delta, light to isolate and moderate chop. And some moderate turbulence in those northwest winds over the central Aleutians. After the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. At the Geophysical Institute, scientists monitor earthquake data from several hundred seismic sensing stations across Alaska. When a seismic disturbance occurs, this data is instantly transmitted to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's West Coast and Alaska Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer, Alaska. Scientists on 24-hour call quickly analyze that data, along with data from their own network of sensors, and decide whether or not they should issue a tsunami warning. When we see a large earthquake has occurred and it's occurred near the coast, we'll issue a warning to those who could be affected by the wave within a certain amount of time. And then we'll monitor the wave to see if it really was dangerous or not. And if it was dangerous, then we'll expand the warning to, in, to, uh, to all the people that it may be dangerous for. You can improve warning systems. You can do that a number of ways. One of the most obvious is by providing better hardware. Uh, to measure earthquakes more accurately, but also to measure directly the tsunami itself. As part of the DART project, Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunamis, NOAA has developed a system of six ocean buoys which help measure a potential tsunami. Attached to the buoys are pressure sensors on the ocean bottom that can detect tsunamis passing overhead. The sensors instantly beam the data via satellite to NOAA's tsunami warning centers in Palmer and Eva Beach, Hawaii. I work with, uh, uh, with the state, state seismologists and other seismologists in our uh, Alaska Earthquake Information Center uh, to generate the hypothetical earthquake scenarios. These what-if scenarios uh, are used to produce very practical uh, products. Uh, one of them is called an inundation map. Inundation maps are critical to defining evacuation zones and routes so that coastal communities can respond quickly in the event of a tsunami. 
These deceptively simple maps show the highest point of flooding by a potential tsunami, but a mind-numbing amount of data is needed to generate them. It is only with the advent of the supercomputer that researchers finally had the tool they needed to take tsunami research to the next level. In the mid-1990s, Alaska Sea Grant funded a research project by University of Alaska Fairbanks scientists Sigmund Kowalik and Elena Suleimani. They worked with the Arctic Region Supercomputing Center at UAF to create a model of an event that occurred over 120 years ago. The first effort to test a tsunami model was uh, to uh, model the 1883 uh, wave that was generated by the eruption of St. Augustine Volcano, that is uh, an island volcano in Cook Inlet. When the volcano erupted, part of the mountain crashed into the sea and generated a wave that raced across Cook Inlet and partially flooded the village of English Bay. A logbook kept by the Alaska Commercial Company trading post at English Bay documents the sudden inundation. On this morning at 8.15 o'clock, four tidal waves flowed with a westerly current, one following the other at the rate of 30 miles per hour, the sea rising 20 feet above the usual level. Kowalik and Suleimani's analysis of that event resulted in a computer model that has been refined and is now used to create inundation maps for Alaska coastal towns. This supercomputer animation shows how several tsunamis inundated the U.S. Navy base in Kodiak after the 1964 earthquake. The red area indicates maximum inundation. Projections like this are used to create inundation maps. The goal of our work in inundation mapping is to make uh, coastal Alaska a safer place to live. And I think our major goal is to save lives. Some shrewd detective work helped the researchers refine their computer model. Geologist and tsunami expert Dr. Gary Carver collected geological clues and considered eyewitness accounts to work up an accurate picture of what actually happened when the tsunamis hit Kodiak in 1964. In this area, the wave came up this bay, uh, and, uh, and we have here some of the very best uh, information concerning how large the 1964 wave was. Um, this is also an area where we modeled the wave as a, as a way of calibrating the modeling exercise. And what we found is that in this particular case, the modeled wave departed somewhat from what we know to be the actual um, area that the wave covered. But in reality, we know from the sand deposits and from the eyewitness accounts that the wave ran back into the trees, into the vicinity of those many uh, houses and buildings back there. And so here's a place where we were able to use the geologic evidence and the historic evidence to calibrate the model. If we get a big tsunami in this community, similar to what the University of Alaska Fairbanks researchers have told us, this waterfront will be gone. Our goal is to protect community residents um, and do the best we can to protect infrastructure. And by knowing where the wave may come, based on the information from the scientists, we've got a much better chance of preparing the community for dealing with that. But we've also tried to really educate the community that there are some instances that could cause a tsunami and the sirens may not go off because we may not have gotten word that from the Tsunami Warning Center in Palmer that in fact a tsunami is on its way. And that would be one that would be locally generated by a, a local earthquake. And what we tell people is if they have trouble standing up for 15 seconds or the earthquake lasts for longer than 30 seconds, they should evacuate. They shouldn't wait for the siren to go off. To help people in towns like Kodiak understand the threat and prepare for the next tsunamis, the NOAA National Weather Service runs an information program in partnership with the Alaska Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management called the Tsunami Ready Program. Seward, Alaska was designated as the first tsunami ready uh, community within the state. The Alaska Division of Emergency Services and the city uh, government got together through the, via the fire chief and assistant city manager and worked to uh, bring us into a uh, uniform plan for evacuation and informational uh, distribution to all of the citizens within the area. This is a test of the emergency siren system. This is only a test. 
It means that we can get the word out to the people. We have all of the uh, warning systems in place. We receive the information. We can pass that on to the people in town and be able to get them into an area of safety uh, in case of tsunami. For the sourdough Alaskans who survived the ocean's fury in 1964, a real-life nightmare is burned into their memories. They know what tsunamis can do. But most of us were not here back then. When the black waves of March tore into our shores and swept away more than a hundred souls. We would do well to learn from the experience of our fellow Alaskans. Because as the scientists assure us, it is not a question of if, but when the next tsunami will strike our coastline. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis uh, still showing central coast here eastward, all ice now. And the change is this is going to continue to progress southward uh, 20, 30 or more nautical miles over the next five days. And the ice down here along the Yukon Delta into southern Norton Sound, really not expected to change much at all. And moving on to the coastal water forecast, uh, fairly light winds here, especially compared to what's going to come in uh, tomorrow night and Sunday here on the south coast. 15 knots from the south, southeast 20, 6 to 7 foot seas on the north coast. Light winds, Lynn Canal, southeast 10 to 15, central and southern inside waters. Then the big change here, southeast 30 knots on the south coast. Gales, north coast, all out of the southeast, seas running 13 to 19 feet. Winds stay light in Lynn Canal out of the north at 10 with two foot seas and east southeast release for the remainder of the inside waters at 15 with three foot seas. Prince William Sound, northeast 20, north Gulf Coast, eastern north Gulf Coast, east winds coming up to 30 knots tomorrow afternoon, seas building to six feet. And then good gales here for the western north Gulf Coast, especially for the Barren Islands, 40 to 45 knots out of the east, seas up to 13 feet, northeast increasing to 40 knots. For uh, Kamishak Bay and Gales come into the picture tomorrow afternoon for Southern Cook Inlet and even Northern Cook Inlet kicking up to 30 knots out of the northeast. Then for Sunday, north 25 knots for Northern Cook Inlet and then strong northeast winds south of the Forelands into Kamishak Bay at 40 knots, 11 to 13 foot seas. Uh, minimum gales now for the Barren Islands out of the southeast. Easterlies, 30 knots, western north Gulf Coast, southeast 35 for the east side now, 17 foot seas. Increase in the winds here, 30 knots out of the east for Prince William Sound, those seas up to 7 feet. And for Shelikoff Strait, 55 knot northeast winds here for tomorrow, seas up to 20 feet. And then 45 to 50 knot winds for the east side of Kodiak all the way down to Castle Cape. Otherwise, the Alaska Peninsula northeast, 40 to 45 knots, 8 to 15 foot seas. Storm warnings out for Bristol Bay, northeast 50 knots and 11 foot seas. Lighter winds uh, in store for Sunday, Shelikoff Strait east 25, south 25 on the east side of Kodiak, and just 15 knot winds, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, southeast 20 to 25 for the Alaska Peninsula, 
And northeast 25 for Bristol Bay with 5 foot seas. Northwest 30 knots for the Fox Islands tomorrow with 8 to 12 foot seas. Central Aleutians stronger. Northeast 40 to 50 knot winds with uh, seas up to 21 feet and then 35 to 45 knot winds decreasing as you head west there with 18 to 22 foot seas. And for Sunday, north 25 knots for the far western Aleutian zones. Otherwise, uh, about Amchitka to Adak, 40 knot winds from the north. Central Aleutians, north to northwest, 45 knots, seas 20 to 30 feet. And uh, those winds uh, kind of get a little more squirrely here toward the Fox Islands. There's still some good gales there north of Unalaska Island, east 40 knots. Coming down across Nik uh, Nikolski, 45 knot winds from the north northwest and then southeast 25 south of Unalaska Island. For the Bering Sea, Along the southwest coast, gales tomorrow coming up uh, 35 to 40 knots. Northeast 30 for the Pribilofs, 40 knots for the northern Bering Sea. St. Lawrence Island, east 25. And then for Sunday, gales in Norton Sound, 40 knot winds, St. Lawrence Island. Storm warning there, north on Nunavak Island, 45 knot winds for the northern Bering Sea. 50 knot winds out of the northeast for the Pribilofs. Storm warnings there and northeast 45, south on Nunavak Island. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, pretty light winds tomorrow, 5 to 10 knots, even onto the central coast. And then these increase to 25 out of the east, those small craft advisories for the west side down to Cape Thompson, then back around to the southeast at 15. And then the outlook for Sunday, gales, those 15 knot winds go up to 35 knots out of the north here for this Chuck Sea Sea, 25 knot winds around the western capes, and then east 10 to 15, central and east, west side, northeast 15 on the east side. And tonight again, uh, Areas of rain, Alaska Peninsula, and then diminishing showers through here, milder air, so it could be in the form of rain or snow showers, eventually all the way up into the Seward Peninsula. Narrow band of snow in the northwest of the central interior. Flurries, mostly cloudy, Tanah Valley, 40 mile country, on up to the north slope, clearing out here for south central Alaska, resulting in colder temperatures, continued diminishing showers. Next storm, wind, rain coming up, Kodiak Island, uh, north Gulf Coast to late tomorrow and extending westward and we'll see on Sunday the whole thing lifts northward a good push of warm air so whatever starts out as snow will be short-lived. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Thank you.